Hey everybody, it's Wednesday, November 30th, 2011. Wow, 2011's kind of coming and going. And uh, tonight we are on with Sir Doug Riddle of the Accepted for Value family. Uh, we have Doug Riddle with us tonight who's going to be going over the Accepted for Value process and tonight Doug I believe what we're going to do is we're going to do more of a basic how to kind of get you know since this is kind of a new call for you we'll go back to uh, the very basics of how to do an acceptance for value from the beginning so that this audience has a chance to so we all can be on the same page <clears throat> the same page okay. and then we'll have some uh, Q&A's afterwards so uh so how you doing? Anything new going on this week? Uh, um, any new accepted for value stuff learned or? Well, there's a oh, sure. guy out there promoting accepted for value. He's charging five hundred dollars and telling everybody that everybody else's method is garbage, uh, which is beginning to be annoying. <laughs> uh, I I don't care if people have a, another method for doing except for value and in fact i encourage it um it's just that when you come on and you start saying that everybody's doing it wrong and they're doing it incorrectly and none of their stuff is, is valid it's not doing anybody any good you got to be considerate of other people be considerate of the other methods and understand there's more than one way to do these things if it works, fantastic. More power to you, and I hope that you teach whoever needs to know it the way you do it. That being said, you know, it's um, it's just a method to, to do this. If we had only one person to send all these to, and they did them the proper way every single time, then everything... That, that would be perfectly fine. The problem is you're dealing with employees of the government who don't always know what they're supposed to do. I can recall one time when I was getting my passport, I went over to a post office. Um, there, at that particular place, they talked about passports and what you need and what the requirements are and all that kind of stuff. I go up there and request for a new passport, and they ask to see my ID. The only ID I had at the time was an expired passport. And when I showed it to them, they said, um, we can't use this. And I said, yes, you can. I read and I got cut off. They said, no, we can't. I said, yes, you can. They said, no, it's expired. And I go, I'm still me regardless of what the ID is expired or not. And <laughs> they just kind of looked at me like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. And so rather than make a scene and, and go through all that stuff, I just took it and decided to go someplace else. I went down to the state capitol, um, did the same thing, and they responded the same way. Well, we can't use that expired passport. And I said, yes, you can. But instead of arguing with me, they said, get the book. And so they got out the book, and they started looking at the requirements and everything. and said, oh, yes, right here, we can use an expired passport. And I said, I know. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so they took my information and, and my expired passport and sent it on in, and I got a new one. Uh, so you're not always dealing with people who know what's going on out there. You don't, they don't always know what they're supposed to be doing, even though that's part of their job. Um, so, you know, the accepted for value, if we're dealing with one person, then there would only be one method. If we're dealing with a whole bunch of people, we don't know what they know or don't know. And some people may need this type of verbiage. Some people may something else. Some people may not even know what it is and decide to throw it away or something. We don't know whose hands they're getting into, and we don't have a proper title or a proper room number or something that we're supposed to send them to. So far that I'm aware, of, we have three addresses that we know have accepted these accepted for values in the past and then what they're supposed to do. And that's where we stand right now. Good point. Nice 
story. So even with something straightforward that's done every day, such as a passport, you still get people that screw it up. Yeah. And then when you get something that's exotic, like accepted for value, which is like a little secret, um, don't complain about the results because if they can't get the the regular thing right, this one's going to be more difficult. So you're you're bound to get uh, very different results or very inconsistent results. Because the way I see it is, you mail these things in, and they probably have the lowest paid employee opening up the envelope. Somebody's got to open them. Somebody's got to pull the stuff out, separate the checks from uh, the invoices, and and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, as you know, the people on the lowest rung of the ladder are the ones who do the most revolving door stuff. And they may be taught that if you see something like this, take it over here. That doesn't mean that all those people know that or that the person who told them or is supposed to tell them to do that has actually done so. You know, they may be behind what they're trying to teach them and may have forgotten, oh, this is a new batch, this is a new crowd of uh, people that we're training. And uh, so they don't get told the right thing soon enough. Now, I don't know if any of that's true. But that's a much better story for me to believe than to believe that these things don't work when I know they have. Right. Yeah. Well, so and you, what? Well, I was going to say, um, you know, I, I've heard your calls before, and Doug, I've never heard you put anybody else down before. I've never heard you come out swinging, well, that guy sucks, and his stuff is this, and blah, blah, blah. Um, you seem very open to, you know, examine what works and what doesn't work and why. Yeah. I, I believe that right. this is extremely important for us to reduce the debt, and it's my opinion that this is the only way to reduce the debt. Um, and, and I'm open to any type of method or anything. If there's a method out there that works better than mine, um, then I want to know it, and I want to use it. <laughs> no kidding. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, but so far I haven't seen anything that's been worthy pursu pursuing um, to do this. But I haven't seen anything that's been outlandishly wrong or incorrect either. It's just a different method. Okay. All right. Um, we got a. A request on the board. We can probably get to it later, but I'll go ahead and tell you. Somebody's saying, I wish Doug would show us some of his personal successes. I'm sure you've heard that before. Um, and if that's something you can do, then maybe we can get to that later. Otherwise, how do you know? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and the thing is, is I didn't really do any um, scanning or recording of any of my documents because, um, like so many other people, I didn't know I was going to be talking to anybody about this. I just heard what was being said, listened to it for a very long time, um, then leaked into it and started doing my federal taxes, my state taxes, and I mailed them in. I didn't record any of that. You know, there was no point for me to do so because who was I going to tell? Very few people were coming out and saying what they had success with. A lot of people were asking questions how to do it, and they were getting answers. And then they go away, and you never hear from them. Um, so I didn't record any of this stuff. It was before I thought of ever scanning any of these documents. And afterwards, I go, well, this isn't going to really prove anything to anybody. Just like the recent sample on the A for B group, um, somebody sent in what they wrote, accepted across their bill, and showed a, a receipt of where that amount that says, the, the created money order, which they didn't put money order on their voucher, so maybe you do need it or don't need it. But he put the $540 in the box and signed it and mailed it in. But that doesn't tell me anything, really. That, you know, when you if you're going to look at it as proof or something, then proof you have to remove all reasonable doubts. And so if I'm going to look at that, I'm going to say, how do we know we didn't send a check-in? How do we know that he didn't put a money order in there besides? Or how do we know he didn't go to the business and pay 
playing catch. Uh, right. I'm not saying to doubt him or anything, but to call that proof is irresponsible. You can say this is some evidence. These are this is what I sent them, but you haven't really proved anything. And over the internet, you cannot prove it. Um, and I try to stress this many, many times because, you know, you can keep challenging it at every step. Proof requires agreement. So you have to lay down what it is that you require for this to be accepted as proof. You know, just because you saw the man with a knife in his hand standing over the dead body <clears throat> doesn't prove that he's the one who did it. It, it all it proves is that at that particular moment he was standing over the body with the knife. He may have pulled the thing out, saying, "You know, this is." Um, I thought I was doing some help by pulling the thing out. We don't know what he was doing or what he was intending to do. You know, you watch these uh, criminal shows and everything. You see this right. kind of thing all the time, where you know, oh, of course they're guilty. But then you come out and you find out the little tiny details in between and realize, no, he wasn't. It just happened to be, at that particular moment, it looked really, really bad for this guy. <laughs> right. All right, so you've answered that one. So perhaps what we could do is uh, maybe start from the beginning and uh, from your experience maybe show us what is the method of doing an accepted for value that you know has worked for you and others? Okay. Uh, well, I start out with the, the words accepted for value. That's A-C-C-E-P-T-E-D, accepted. I keep on seeing some people that show me their, their paperwork that put the words accepted, E-X-E-C-P-T-E-D. It's not accepted. <laughs> It's even hard for me to say it over the phone. It's accepted, not accepted. And they sound very similar, and if I get sloppy um, in my speech or something, somebody could easily make uh, an error or something. If they go to um, the website, then you can look at the, the verbiage itself. Uh, and, but it's accepted for value. Now, some people put in, after that, return for value for settlement and closure. To me, I quit using the return for value for settlement and closure because, number one, return for value seemed to be redundant because isn't that what I'm actually doing is I'm already returning it? It's, I always kind of looked at that like uh, that would be me saying return for value, put in an envelope, place the stamps on, and mailed it myself because that's what – was done. Um, but some people like that language, return for value, and there's nothing wrong with using it. It doesn't, as far as I can tell, doesn't cause any harm or uh, delay anything. It's just other words that may or may not be useful in, in the settlement of it. Um, the reason I quit using for settlement and closure was because, uh, number one, the IRS, as far as I can tell, never closes the account uh, unless it's completely paid off and that's part of the process. But they don't go in there to deliberately shut down any account unless the company, once they get all paid off, they decide to shut it down. Um, but a lot of people were sending these to the companies themselves and they would put for settlement and closure. And then when asked, was it your intention to settle and close the account? They go, no, it was only intended to settle the account. Then why did you put and closure? And a lot of people just was, well, that's what I was told to do. And while we like templates and we like uh, pre-formatted directions and everything, we still got to put some thought into this and make sure what we're doing and why we're doing it. We may not understand everything. And we may not always retain everything.